Hey everybody, it's Rothbard's Disciple here. I am bringing you guys a video on how to create a hive mind DAC for creating things like comic books, okay? Um, and we're going to talk about um, what makes a hive mind DAC completely different from any other sort of uh, corporation and all the benefits it allows you to do. And I'm first going to walk you through. Um, sort of how I would like to do it because it's technically impossible on Bitcoin Cash right now. Um, it's if uh, Bitcoin SV would have released the tokenized token app, uh, it would have been more possible on that. That one was actually a better token system. Um, but there, I don't know. I don't even know if they're ever going to release it. Um, from what it sounds like, they have given up on the whole put the tokens into a wallet thing and it's going to be more of like a if you want to use the tokenized app, you have to be a large company and you can only use it for like stocks and bonds, but I'm not even really sure what's going on with tokenized. Um, they, they fucked up real bad by not releasing a product. But anyways, I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to show you guys how to, how I'm going to attempt to do this using the Electron Cash SLP token system. Okay, and you can't fully do it, and I'm going to show you that. So to start off with, um, I'm just going to show you guys a, a couple of my, uh, um, my, uh, my scenes here, my scenes for this comic book. So if you look at this picture here, here's a list of my scenes from my comic book. Now, obviously, if you look at the numbers for the scenes, the scenes are numbered and in order. Um, I changed this list to be shown by the, the, the last date that the scenes were modified. Um, and I did this because, um, when I create, uh, I'm, I'm going to hash all of these scenes together and create a Merkle root from these scenes that represents all of the scenes together, or the hash of all the scenes combined together. Um, and when I do that, I'm actually going to uh, have the hashes put into the Merkle root uh, in accordance with their date modified, because the date that uh, something is modified, uh, uh, that's important. Uh, in terms of uh, you know when you're when you're actually going back and looking at contracts, you want to see who worked on what project at what time. Um, that's part of what the HiveMind DAC is. It stores all this data on chain, and so that's why I'm showing this in terms of date modified rather than in terms of which scene comes first. Okay, and so obviously these scenes start at like uh, scene number 17. Um, there's supposed to be around 40 scenes. Obviously, you can see some of these scenes are split up into multiple parts, but I'm really close to 40 scenes with this particular storyline. There's three main storylines in season one. This one storyline's got about all the scenes that I need for it. Um, anyways, moving on, uh, once you have these scenes, um, if you look at this program that I've uh, written here in uh, Python, um, I can't remember the specific uh, GUI tool I was using. It's not a very good GUI tool. Um, but again, I'm not I'm not a professional with uh, better GUI tools. Uh, this GUI tool I use specifically because it's easiest for me to get all the programs to run the way that I want them to. But if you can see this, actually, um, what what this program does is it hashes all of the uh, files together. If the if the number of hashes that is left in the file is not a not divisible by two, it adds on extra fluff. And I think I just used the um, the hash of the number one, but anyways, and then it'll get it up to be divisible by two because for a Merkle tree, you need it to be divisible by two. And then uh, you just keep uh, hashing it down till you're left with one final hash. And so the final hash that you get for the data of all the files I showed you is the uh, 6FF, whatever it is, um, going on and on and on and on, okay? And then you also have a contract, and then you have that contract hash, and you put the contract hash together with the um, the 6FFF and uh, what you end up with is the final hash, the token hash, which is on the bottom where it says CA7E51, okay? And so if we go ahead and uh, look at this, uh, when you're actually creating a token for some sort of project that you're trying to create, you just you put in the hash of all the work that's been done with the token uh, and then hash that with the contract. And so like we said before, that hash is CA7E510 as of right now. Okay, so I can create a token with a particular document hash. Now, a lot of people would ask me, like, uh, why don't you use the upload a token document that is below, um, like in the uh, kind of bottom right, um, 
on this create a new token screen and the reason is is because I do not want a hash of a single document I have multiple documents that I want hashed together in a Merkle root it's it's completely irrelevant to me um, to put up a single document now there are certain cases where a certain document or where you do want to put up a uh, a single document so they upload a token document can work but um, everything like I said before if you're creating Bitcoin cash applications they need to be built like Bitcoin itself and so when you're putting data on the blockchain you also need an option to uh, create a Merkle root out of it now like I said I've already created my own um, program for this so uh, you can do it without it uh, the only issue then is that you have to copy and paste from one uh, screen to the next and if you make a mistake on this then you've completely ruined everything and you're kind of fucked. <laughs> um, so it'd be much nicer if this was automatic. So just going from this at the beginning, this kind of sucks. Okay. And the other thing too is that if you do upload a token document, it uploads it to the uh, oh what the interplanetary file storage or whatever IPFS. Um, and the problem with that is that I don't like as a normal person who's not a developer. When I try to go to that site, even if I have like the ID or whatever of where my file is, I can't access it. I have no idea how to access it. There's no video showing how to do it. Um, and again, you're only uploading a single file, and I need to upload multiple files and have those files turned into a Merkle root after, you know, and then have that Merkle root hashed with the contract hash. Okay. Um, moving on to the next bit here, though, if you want to actually look at what the contract would say, if you're talking about a um, base contract for. Um, all of your work because there's multiple contracts sometimes there's contracts for individual scenes um, that's probably the way you'll do it but there's also a base overall contract the base overall contract just says hey we're going to use this project under a chain source license or chain source license uh, and just so you guys know the chain source license is sort of a what I call the mixing of copyleft and copyright under Bitcoin, but a chain source license basically says you have all the freedoms of copyleft um, of open source, except for that if you try to redistribute it commercially, um, you uh, are required to pay the owner or the original creators a certain certain fee. And again, if you go back to this, because again, like. Uh, uh, on the particular version of this comic book that I'm making, it's a hash token, right? And so that's my stamp on which is my particular version of this comic book. Then when I use a chain source license, what it says is that, hey, I'm creating this comic book. If you guys want to recreate it in any way, you can. It's just that if you recreate it and then redistribute it, you'll have to pay me a certain percentage based on how much work you've done and how much work I've done. And we'll each be part owners. You can also do it in a certain way so that if, if you change every aspect of the comic book, whether it's the illustration and then also the storyline um, and maybe you change the characters whatever it is if you completely change a comic book even if you use it as a base like the original as a sort of base for your new story if it's completely changed enough uh, the original owner might not own any of what you've created okay and so basically this chain source agreement just says hey whatever is created from this original creation falls under a chain source license it's sort of the way that open source works all right it's pretty simple and that's this is just the contract that went in with or that we hashed together with the data from all of our scenes in the second half of the comic book okay and um, if you keep going here this is uh, what one of the scenes looks like um, we're gonna talk about the scenes a bit more in detail uh, a little bit later on um, but the reason why I bring up the scene here or is a particular scene here is now we're gonna go into if you have or go, go from having one general token which talks about the project as a whole to one specific token that talks about a specific scene. So this scene right here, <coughs> it's a really important scene and there's a very particular reason that I chose it for uh, this video today and that's because uh, this scene in terms of the story, um, the way that I've written it, um, the way that I've written the scene, um, it's kind of like I'm not sure if I should keep the scene in the way that it is. And this is one of the areas where um, a chain source license can be very valuable is in places where you're doing something that you're not sure if it's the best idea. So like me as a writer, I'm not sure if I should like the scene's kind of vital. Um, but the way that I portray the scene could sort of make or break the movie or the, the, the comic book. And the reason why is because this is meant to be a comic book that sort of focuses on a younger crowd. I think in like with Japanese manga or whatever, uh, they would call the comic book that I'm creating a shonen, which is just means this for sort of, you know, like younger, young boys who, and the, the, 
the sh the comic book is about you know people getting as strong as possible, a continuous power creep, whatever, whatever. Um, but that's the sort of a uh, category of comic book that I'm creating. The problem with this is is that in this scene, one of the main characters he reveals his past, and his past was pretty dark. Um, he lived on this basically a planet of a murderous species who uh, they're they're basically evil. Um, he turns out to be a decent dude on that species or on that planet, and then they always you know they try to kill him basically for it. They're they're a society that's built on ritual murder. Um, and so they are always trying to sort of kill him, but he's very talented, and so he's always able to, you know, keep from being killed, and they have a lot of um, sort of uh, competitions where different people of the species will fight to the death, and he always seems to win. Even though he doesn't want to be there, he seems to win. Okay, and so he ends up going in, he trains with a bunch of people. And when he's training, or he trains to become like an elite warrior in the galaxy, but when he's at this training, obviously coming from a sort of murderous species, nobody really likes him. And so this is where he reveals his past, okay? So when he reveals his past, uh, the defining moment that he's actually going to reveal is when he first kills uh, other people, or other other individuals of his species and he's just a child at this point. And so the idea, that, or the, the sort of setup for this scene is that or the idea behind this scene is that uh, in order to become an adult in this society, all the children are set out into basically the wilderness, and they've got a like they're not allowed to come back into civilization until they've got the head of another child. So they have to kill each other. The kids are sent out to go kill each other, and then they can't come back until they have. Um, and so this is sort of the scene talking about that. Now, obviously, if this is for sort of a uh, you know for for children, it's supposed to be for, you know, sort of like teenagers or whatever. Um, it's kind of a serious scene, you know what I mean? Um, and the one thing that I do like about actually Japanese manga and whatnot is that they'll actually go for more serious scenes like this, whereas in America, I'm not sure if this would really go as well. But this scene itself might need to be altered, especially for different um, geographical areas, okay? Just because of the what what's going on in the scene. It's a pretty, it's a pretty intense scene, okay? And I'm actually going to go through this whole, like I'm going to show each one of these scenes later on to show you each part of the aspects that actually need to, like that a chain source uh, license will help me on. Um, I just wanted to show this first thing here. And when I go through and show the other scenes, you can pause it and you can read the whole thing for yourself. Um, this is just a scene, or this is just the page one of the scene. But anyways, if I want to tokenize this particular scene, because I want other people to create different versions of this scene, whether it's I have different artwork or whatnot, um, and especially too, because if you go, if you look at this, this is a, a sci-fi fantasy with a lot of different species and whatnot. So it, during this scene, you can see up at the top, it talks about uh, Zendayans. That's one species. Damon is a Molokite. Damon Aran is a Molokite. Selamastor is a Zendayan. They're a very Technically speaking, those two species were the same species, but then they split and moved to different planets thousands of years ago. So they're kind of the same species, but they got differences now. Um, but anyways, um, each one of those, like if I want different illustrators, maybe, I, maybe I'm not sure what I want the Zendayans to look like. And I've got two different illustrators that I think are great illustrators, but they've got different art styles. And I want, and I don't know which one to pick. I can actually choose both through a token system. And all I got to do is I uh, will hash the... Uh, hash the scene itself and as you can see right here I'm hashing that scene I get B8AC together um, and I didn't use my particular my own program that I wrote for hashing scenes together because this is a single scene and then I just created a a, um, a contract for this scene and I made these percentages up okay so I have absolutely no idea what the actual good percentages of ownership would be for creating a comic book. Um, if you actually had chain source licenses created, these sort of things, like you would have formats to begin with, okay? And so what I will say in this contract is I will say this token represents ownership percentages for the illustrator um, of the scene of the Risen Demon of Azoth. The illustrator slash illustrators of the scene are granted ownership of its products or, or of, of, of the profits of this scene. Um, equal to 65% of total profits for digital copies and 15% for physical copies. Okay, and I just have a much higher percentage for digital copies because a digital copy, there's less, um, it, it takes a lot less to obviously manufacture the comic book and then distribute it. So if you're doing physical copies, then you have to include manufacturer ownerships of profits and things like that, and it gets a little bit more complicated. Okay, and so this, you basically just have a contract that says, hey, if you complete the work for this scene, this is what you will own, okay? And the, and the token represents this, okay? 
and the token represents it for a particular version of this okay so I could have if I again like I said if I want multiple illustrators and I don't know which one I want to use um, I can just give them different tokens okay that's the way that a chain source license works is I would give them different tokens and then each token would be um, representative of a spit or of a particular version of this comic book um, but again, nobody would own the idea of the comic book as a whole. They would only own their particular version. So then, uh, after I uh, after I hash the um, after I hash the uh, the scene itself, I take the hash of the contract, and then I hash the contract, and I hash the hash of the scene together, and I get this final token hash of CF09. Now again, when I create this, I just put it in the document hash, the CF09. Um, I could do upload a token document, but I, again, I don't know how IPFS works. And actually, once I upload a token document, I can't hash the hash of the document against the contract, so that even that doesn't work. Okay, none of none of none of what they've offered me here actually works for what I need. And just so you guys know, I'm creating token quantities. Um, that are, I think I'm using 100 million as my quantity, just because if I'm going to represent 100% ownership, having it be some multiple of 100 makes it really easy. Um, and then I create my token. Here's my token details. As you can see, guys, my token hash is, uh, this obviously I actually is my token hash from the first token, but the hash, you can see it on chain. Everything works. So the problem is, if you look at my options here, once you open up my token details, I cannot change the document hash, okay? So let's think about this logically. If I'm creating a a comic book, and let's say I'm, I'm just changing the particular scene that we showed before, the Risen Demon of Azoth scene, um, the problem here is that if I get an illustrator, the actual work for that project is no longer just what I've written. It's no longer just that Word document that I have. It's now also the illustrations plus the Word documents. So that means that the data that the token represents has changed, which means the hash of the data has changed. And since the hash of the data has changed, uh, that means the final document hash will have changed as well. But there's no way for me to change the document hash to represent this. So I physically am incapable of using these tokens for what I want them to do simply because I cannot change the document hash. If I can write the document hash one time, I should be able to change it um, just through a simple adding of a new hash. And the good thing about Bitcoin transactions is if I, you add a new hash, you should be able to, hopefully, and it depends on how SLP was built, I don't know the full specs, but it should be able to link back to the last transaction from that token. So you should actually be able to go through and see the hashes uh, of the tokens as they change um, just through using the blockchain, and it should be super simple. You just check back to the last token transaction, which should be linked to the most recent token transaction from this wallet. They should all just be linked and it should be really easy okay okay so now that we know that the token systems that we have are not even capable of doing what needs to be done here for these hive minds even though again all you have to do is change the hash it should be like one of the simplest changes that has ever been made to tokens um, unless you have to completely change the way that the protocol it works but how I don't know that would just make me feel like the protocol is not very good but anyways Moving on, I want to go through this scene and go through piece by piece and show you every single thing that I like a chain source agreement can be very valuable for me for. Okay, so first off, you start off with the scene. You're talking about whatever Salem Astor sits or fills her plate with food, and then it brings up the Zendayans. Okay, the Zendayans are a very particular species. They are a magical species. Um, as of right now, I've just got a stock or not stock photo, a photo from Google of just these purple. Um, purple skin, sort of magical looking beings, okay? I don't really, like, I, this is the way the Zendines look could be a million different ways, right? So if you're creating a chain source agreement, what is the way that you want the Zendines to look? I'm not really sure. And with a chain source agreement, you can have multiple different ways that the Zendine could look. You could actually have a particular artist who particularly create a a specific species like maybe that's all that they do is they create this species when whenever you need that species to be created and next you've got Damon who's a Molokite or maybe you have artists who you know they focus on creating the species rather than the backgrounds and sort of and things like that right who really knows because you could have somebody who's really good at creating species and faces because faces can be hard for artists and and then you might have somebody who's really good at um, 
doing depth perception in uh, sort of portraits and whatnot, and so they'll do like sort of backgrounds, the setting, and the scenery. Okay, I don't need one artist to do everything, um, and with a chain source agreement, I can choose who's best at what, and they can be the 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 one that's put included in the final. Um, in the final product. Okay, the other thing too is that if you look at the scene setting uh, at the top in bold, they're in the interior, which just means they're inside the Braga Academy mess hall. Um, mess hall, for those of you who don't know, that's just a place where you go to eat. Um, so I need somebody to create sort of this Braga Academy. Um, I need concept art for, art for it. What is the academy going to look like as a whole? I don't even really know right now as a writer. I just kind of have some basic ideas in my head as I write the scenes. But uh, it could change, maybe, you know. Um, but again, these are things that I need created, and with the chain source agreement, I can have different people working on these different aspects. And even in, like, uh, the other thing that's really cool, too, is, like, let's say for the setting for the Braga Academy, let's say some artist works really hard on creating a, a, a Braga Academy for me, and I just don't like it. For whatever reason, I don't want to use it. The thing that's great about it is that if they were working with someone who was using copyright, um, the, the, the original owner for uh, the comic book in this case, which would be me, if I were using copyright, um, if someone was working for me, I have complete ownership of whatever they create. So they can't go use what they created on some other project. But if it's a chain source agreement, um, if they create something for me and I don't use it, they can use it on a different project at their will. You know, if they create something for me and it doesn't work, maybe they just put it up on their portfolio and they have this portfolio for other writers to look through. And maybe some other writer who's creating another story that's in an academy says, hey, you know, that would work great for my story. And so they can do that. So it leaves options open for everyone involved. Because again, if you're an artist trying to draw, like for Disney, everything that Disney animators ever create is owned by Disney. Everything, okay? It doesn't matter if it gets used or not. Everything they create, Disney owns. Okay, and so this changes the dy dynamic by saying, if you create it and we use it, or like, it, yeah, if you if they create it and I use it, then I will have partial ownership of it in my project, but that doesn't at all stop their own personal ownership um, for this, okay? And so in this first scene, there's not much going on. They're just kind of talking. Um, there is one important part here that it actually is a lot should be a lot more detailed than you would think and it's when they're talking about um, the weapon designs so within this story I've created um, sort of pseudoscience background for the weapons uh, they use particle weaponry and just so you guys know particle weapons are weapons that emit light but the light is able to um, interact with matter so it has sort of properties of light and matter and so it's like a, a bullet traveling at you at the speed of light to some extent um, I'm not going to go through all the pseudoscience for it, but if there was a blueprint that is shown in one of the panels, I would like it to be detailed and actually show, like I, I've, I've done the pseudoscience designing these weapons, okay, and I would like it to show that. That would be really cool, and it would be a cool detail to keep in there. Um, but again, something like that, um, someone would have to read all the pseudoscience that I've done for the weapons and understand it. And so maybe, like, if I were initially creating this scene and uh, maybe the comic book isn't popular by this time, I will create one version without that, and then later on I'll create a new version with an actual detailed blueprint for the weapons. But anyways, going on to uh, this second page, um, there's nothing really big here on this second page um, that is big as far as a uh, chain source agreement goes. They're just kind of talking and you know Salem kind of wants to hear about Damon's past Damon isn't sure if he should say it um, but then anyways going to this next scene uh, you'll see there's a flashback here it says they go to the exterior of Molokite uh, um, or of a Molokite rural village so Molok is a new planet so when you go to this new planet again you need new artwork um, they need new concept art um, there's all these new things, so the people who you have working on the Braga Academy may not be working on this uh, Molokite rural village because they're completely different settings and scenery, and you never really know. And the other thing, too, is once we start getting into uh, this actual ritual, this ritual where, where the kids or the children kill each other, um, it, it's it's questionable whether this, she this scene should be even left in to this comic book. So we're even talking about using a chain source agreement so that the, the scenes that I write can be overruled by somebody else. So maybe I create this scene and people are like, well, I kind of get what you're going with, but I would have preferred to have, 
you know, been told about this in a less explicit way or something like that, you know. Um, and so maybe some other writer rewrites my scene and they kind of, you know, they get to showing Damon's background in a different way that has the same effect but isn't as explicitly violent, you know what I mean? And so maybe that's what will happen from this. So not only, you know, could we use a chain source agreement to get different illustrators for an entirely new planet, but you can do it to get a, an entirely new writer other than the original writer. Okay. Um, moving forward, um, th this next one, again, this is just him talking about the ritual as it goes, as they're going through this ritual, so it's kind of the same as the last scene, so there's nothing big here new for the chain source agreement, um, where it starts to get, uh, iffy in terms of whether or not you would want a different writer is this next scene here, and again, if you guys want to pause this and read it before I go through it, but, uh, in this next scene, you see how Damon is going to plan on killing the other, the other children. And it also talks about after they kill the ch child, they shrink the head and then wear it as a necklace. Again, if you're doing this for sort of younger kids, I'm not sure if this is a good scene. Um, the, uh, the only counter-argument I can give to that is if you watch Japanese anime... Uh, they do have some sort of more serious scenes in them, and I don't think it'll, like, this would, this would be a, a comic book, or if it were created into a TV show, which would be the end goal, but if this was a comic book, it'd be the sort of thing, like, you'd put a PG-13 rating on, where it's like, you might want to watch this with your kids, and you might even give this scene itself a different rating, who knows, but anyways, you can see how he's going to start um, deciding to kill these uh, these children, okay, and so... This next scene is where it actually starts happening, right? Where he pulls out a blowpipe and he starts, uh, you know, shooting the the darts, the poison darts at the children, all right? And so this this isn't the part, this part of the scene where he starts killing some of the children with the poison darts. I don't have an issue with that. Um, You'll see in the next scene why I think why I might have an issue with what Damon eventually does, but obviously if you're doing any sort of uh, you know manga, comic book, or an anime, whatever it is, you know you have good guys fighting bad guys and they defeat the bad guys and it's kind of implied that they die. That's not really a big issue in terms of what's going on. And obviously here um, there the you know Damon isn't. He, he doesn't consent to where he's at. He's forced into this situation, so he doesn't want to have to do what he's going to do. Um, he, yeah, he doesn't he doesn't necessarily want to do what he's got to do, but uh, he's forced into this situation. So in terms of someone watching it, um, I don't really have an issue with them seeing what happens here. But uh, later on in this next scene, this is the part where I'm not sure if I should have this... Uh, in the comic book at all. I want to keep it in the comic book cause be, because it's a very important uh, scene. Uh, I want something in here like this. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it. Um, but in this scene, uh, what you'll see is that uh, obviously there are two groups, if you've read, if you've been reading the scene as we've been going, there are two groups of uh, children that Molokai, or that Damon has uh, attacked. Uh, there's the group of children from his own tribe, and his own tribe, they tormented him throughout his life, you know, they tried to kill him multiple times, and so he wants to kill those kids, because he knows, like, they're trying to kill him, so it's self-defense, um, so for, but obviously they got attacked by another group of, uh, Molokites, and so he had to deal with them first, so he poisoned the first group of Molokite children that were not from his tribe, okay, the second group of Molokite children, he shot them with a paralytic, uh, venom, or, or darts dipped in a paralytic, and what happens in this, uh, scene here is uh, he drags the uh, children of his tribe uh, that he paralyzed with his dart, and he pulls them up to the edge of a river, and he lets them drown. Okay, he lets them drown so that they can see each other drown. Um, the kind of idea that I have for this right now also is that uh, he sits them on the river, and that Moloch itself has multiple moons, which means the tide for the river will be changing constantly. And so he just sits there and then lets the tide change and lets them uh, drown, and he lets them watch the other ones die. Okay, so pretty pretty serious stuff, but it's short, it sort of shows you uh, the most important thing about Damon's background, that he decided when he was living on this planet full of murderers and psychopaths that he was going to make it his life goal 
um, to eliminate murderers and psychopaths, and he hates how murderers and the murderers and psychopaths where he's from uh, make you fearful, and so he's going to make he's you know he's going to use their weapons against him, and he's going to be completely brutal about it, and he doesn't care. Okay, and so this is a big moment here, but again, is this something you really necessarily want to show children? And there are ways that you can do it so that some of the, uh, like what's going on um, and how, like if, if you don't actually show them drowning in the water, you can just show demon dragging them up towards the water and setting them down by the edge as the tide sort of comes in and some of the children won't understand. So it's a way to get a message across to adults that kids don't get. And this is a really common thing and sort of... Um, things that are shown to kids rather than or shown to like like if this gets turned into an animated tv show parents would watch this with their kids and if you look at a lot of different tv shows animated tv shows there are jokes in there for parents as well as kids and this would be something like that where it shows you it, this wouldn't be a joke but it would be a backstory that the adults would understand that maybe the kids don't understand until they're older okay um <coughs> But obviously, I don't even know if I necessarily want to keep this scene in here like this just because of the intended audience uh, for this comic book. Um, this is by far the most intense scene in the comic book. I mean, there are other, you know, intense scenes, but there are things that children would understand. This one of, you know, sort of brutally killing people, even though you can argue that it's justified. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's the right fit. Okay. And then the other thing, too. Uh, going on in this, if we're just talking about other options that uh, you can use chain source agreements, um, the other thing to remember too is that this comic book that I'm trying to create eventually is meant to be a um, an animated TV series. And like I said before, the one thing that's great about chain source agreements is uh, places where the creators aren't necessarily worried about getting paid immediately and they're actually trying to build something bigger later on. So if this were made into a comic book, me as the writer, I would almost be willing to you know take zero money for my work and there's two reasons for that one i've got a shitload of merchandise i've already created for it and two i want it to be made into a tv show later on um and so those would be the times that i would actually ask to get paid is on those two bits um but what makes this really great is that i can work with other people give them ownership of this project and we can keep these uh, ownership agreements and contracts forever, even though I don't have money for lawyers right now. I don't have money for any of that. And it can be stored on the blockchain so that everyone knows from the beginning. And they all have this time-stamped, uh, irrefutable proof of what they have done. The only requirement is that each creator saves their creation. So and that's obviously pretty obviously going to happen. You know, for me, like, what are the... <laughs> The idea that I would ever uh, delete my work is retarded because I need my work to complete my project. And that would be just the true of any other creator on who is working on, um, you know, my project with me. Like if I try to work with an illustrator, they have to keep what they've illustrated. Otherwise, it can't be used on my project. OK, and so everything that they need, they but like by definition, they have to already have because of the way that the system is set up. But again, none of this is possible until I can change hashes with the token because the whole point is that I'm using this token and its hash to show changes in the work done on the project and any changes made to the contracts. Okay, And there's no way for me to change a hash on Bitcoin Cash's SLP tokens right now. And so I'm just sitting here waiting. And while everybody creates these stupid ass appreciation tokens which have no fucking use or you know, I don't know. Like the tokens that are being created are completely retarded. Um, you know, they really piss me off. And I'll get into these more in depth later on. Uh I'm my next video is going to be talking about Realm X. It's a video game that was recently put on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. It's really similar to a lot of the things Bitcoin SV is doing and just like the things Bitcoin SV is doing, it's retarded. So I don't know why Bitcoin Cash is doing it and I want to show you guys how you could actually create video games using a chain source agreement and why it's much better than using uh you know whatever like I've, I've looked into the realm x uh idea and how they're going to use tokens for their game and it's kind of retarded there's no real reason or function for it they could change it slightly and then make it really useful but they just haven't but anyways i hope you enjoyed this video i hope this explained things more often and i hope you really can understand how uh these sorts of things can actually be used in the real world because again as of right now if you're trying to create a comic book or anything like that it's all censored by the big companies the big publishers and there's no way to get around that and so everyone's kind of screwed but if you do chain source agreements you can work with amateurs and you don't have to trust them because bitcoin removes the trust from the equation all you have to do is look at the records that are put on the blockchain anyways hope you enjoyed this video there will be more coming out soon